Yeah, so I mean, any endurance sports, whether it's like uh, long distance running or triathlons even more, where actually you combine three endurance sports, long distance swimming, cycling and running in a single package. Uh, in my experience, uh, there are two rules for these things uh, to get ready and to finish them in a comfortable way. A lot about your experience, your uh, your background. We've talked about how Chennai Trekking Club came into came to the picture. We've talked about how the Chennai Triathlon came to the picture. So, can you let's say can you tell us tell the viewers as to let's say someone like me who's living in Mumbai or any other city, let's say Pune or Delhi, how can they take up triathlon? How can they take up uh, take up this sport or just how can they be more outdoorsy given the fact that all of us have these uh, we ha all of us have only the weekends here so how can we inculcate and become more of an outdoor person uh, you're asking about the practice for this kind of triathlon no i'm just saying that how, how should i how should we uh, uh, how do we start how do we start? How do we go about it? Yeah, so I mean, any endurance sports, whether it's like uh, long distance running or triathlons, even more, where actually you combine three endurance sports long distance swimming, cycling, and running in a single package. Uh, in my experience, uh, there are two rules for these things uh, to get ready and to finish them in a comfortable way. One is consistency the fact that you need to really practice, eh? you cannot. I see many people again with social media get over inspired, right? They see yeah. their uh, Facebook <laughs> and whoa, uh, finished a uh, half marathon in this city. Whoa, they also feel like bats, right? Uh, I need to do the same because I feel I'm fitter than that guy or I'm at the same level. So next week I want to finish my full uh, uh, my full marathon or my half triathlon, but it doesn't mm. work that way. You need to really practice, especially for a triathlon where you have to practice on three different endurance parts. Uh, you only have one week at your disposal where you have only seven days in the week. You have to pick two days for the run, two days for the swim and maybe one day for the cycle practice. So that consistency is very important. So over weeks and months, uh, you need to really uh, uh, slowly practice, uh, but on a very regular basis. That's the only way you're going to bring out the triathlon, the triathlon man uh, or the Iron Man uh, in you. In you. Uh, so consistency uh, is the key. Yeah. So rule number one, consistency. And rule number two is patience. So a lot of time, uh, especially with the current generation, I see that people, they want to do it. They want to do it tomorrow. They want to do it next yeah, week. It doesn't work yeah. that way. Your body is actually built to run. Your body is built to uh, swim and all. So that's fine. It's all in there in the muscle. But the muscles, hey, the body needs to, you need to activate that again. Because especially in the modern times, we have all become lazy bummers. We sit at home. We sit uh, in the office. We order food through Swiggy. We don't move anymore and we cannot expect right. that body that was built to run to uh, immediately finish a full marathon next week. So you need to be patient, give it weeks, give it months of consistent, regular practice. And then you can really do this very easily, I would say. You don't have, you don't really need uh, coaching and special nutrition and special training plans. Those are all shortcuts, I feel like. Uh, it's, it's become like a big industry running and triathlon. Triathlon is also pretty expensive, I mean. You have these fancy carbon right. bikes, Vespa, right. two plus lags. You have these expensive coaches. Uh, that's all fine. I mean, that can all accelerate the process a little, guide you a little. But in the end, it comes down to two, 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 two uh, of those rules, consistency and patience. Uh, give it six months, give it one year, and you'll see if you're consistently practicing. You'll reach there without any external help, without special nutrition. Uh, to kind of finish it again in a comfortable way, not like uh, practicing on a special program. Then you have this tapering, you have this, this is like <laughs> yeah. a whole ecosystem yes. of special terminology. Then you need your recovery period, this, that, that's all crap according to me. I can finish a, a whole virus every weekend if I want because I'm consistently running, I'm consistently swimming in the ocean. 
So it's part of life. Once it becomes part of life, it's not a special thing anymore. Uh, anyone can do it. Correct. But you need to invest time and you need to be patient. Give it its time. Always listen to your body. Never get into an injury because uh, people who want to do it too fast, they soon get into injuries and mm -hmm. high running is high impact. So then obviously they, they get an injury. They cannot do anything for two months and then they get demotivated and then they give up is like uh, I've seen many times so as long as you listen to your body you slowly scale up you don't focus on speed you don't focus on distance but you just run comfortably and you slowly uh, expand your range uh, then that's the way actually that it happens naturally uh, injury free and you'll enjoy the events rather than Correct. dying at the finish line and then for the next six months again you can't do anything because you need yeah to even that is something even I tell people that you know it's better that you train well and enjoy the race if you're untrained and you just show up you're going to have a hard time you're going to be suffering throughout the race maybe you you reach the finish line but you're not going to be in good shape and right. uh, okay so, one one last question uh, how let's say like you were very successful in creating an outdoor community so how can uh, what what tips can you give or what guidance can you give to somebody who wants to start a similar outdoor community in a different city? And oh, good how question. do we go about it? Good question, Abhishek. So, yes, same rule, I would say, there, uh, consistency. So, the only reason why CTC grew out to a 40,000 member organization with hundreds of organizers in, in so many disciplines, like we hike, we even do us to do a lot of social events, taking out like orphan kids to on the same kind of treks. Uh, we used to, we you now got into blood donations, the triathlons, ultra races. Uh, so we planned like entire forests out of the city. We organize mountain biking. We, we do like thousands of kilometers of runs in the Himalayas. Uh, photography events, biking events, uh, camping outside the city events. So like multitude of sports events. So it only happened because we were very consistent. We were doing this initially myself and then later say as we did it, more and more people used to get experience and join the organizing team. But during the initial uh, year, I would say I was the main guy driving it. And the only thing that succeeded is because that every single weekend I used to plan some events so that uh, uh, there was that consistency, that continuity. There was always yeah, because people are not available uh, if you're just going to do it once the quarter okay it's not never going to create the momentum people might not be available on that date so by doing it almost 52 weekends in the year anyone could join one weekend we used to always have rotating crowd 50 percent were regulars 50 percent were always new blood coming into it Great. so rule number one do it regularly and then as important i would say is your documentation uh, if you're going to do this and then at the end of the weekend you're just going to go back to normal business without sharing this without capturing this yes. without documenting yes. nobody's going to know about it so i tell this many people even people who want to start doing any kind of event like say tree plantations in a certain neighborhood or cleanups in a certain neighborhood uh, we were eventually cleaning up the Chennai beaches here with like 5000 people removing 50 tons of garbage uh, annually uh, with 120 different uh, organ organizations, like I think all big companies in, in China eventually used to participate in that annual event. That only happened eh, because we were clearly documenting. Uh, documenting in the sense, eh, whenever you organize an event or run, or whenever you go in the forest, discover some beautiful waterfalls, we always used to document it with beautiful photos. There was used to be a, a new guy, typically a fresher. Uh, because for us it became a routine, but for people joining it for the first time, they got overwhelmed with the experience. They use, and again, not too many people are into blogging, so only one out of 50 guys would then say, okay, let me write the experience in the blog. We used to publish this blog on our website. So create a website where you publish blogs, write-ups, document, uh, give information to beginners how to get started, so publish a lot of photos on the social media. So because of that continuous momentum of uh, sharing what we are doing with 30 people, that spread out every weekend to hundreds of people or friends on the social media. Uh, even 10 years from now, people can still go to our blog where we have more than 1,000 write-ups and they can learn and uh, see all the experiences we had over the last 10 years. Only because of that, I think we're able to create that momentum and grow uh, exponentially to almost 40,000 people over 10 years. Uh, consistently organizing and consistently documenting 
and then also the fact, right? So I met many people in in our group. I used to be quite famous in Chennai. So whenever I used to go to a movie or a restaurant, there used to be somebody there or you, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. And then nine out of ten guys that I meet in that movie or in that uh, restaurant, I would ask them, "Hey, oh yes, I'm Peter. Uh, when did you come with us?" Nine out of ten guys said, "Oh, I'm I'm a proud member of the Chennai Trekking Club, but I've never oh, wow. come to any events for the last two years. Just imagine." <laughs> but they have been following us online hey, as a member of the mailing group, as a, as a member of the Facebook group, or whatever. But so far, eh, they had they they are really proud. So that's the, that's the interesting thing. They were proud CTC members. Anyone yeah, questioning us or saying anything negative about CTC, they would actually stand up for us. But at the same time, for two years, they never found the time they never found it, yeah. <laughs> to join us one time, <laughs> which was very funny. So then I told them, "Come on, guys, at least uh, join us one time." And so that also shows that local culture, where people are still a little conservative. Whenever you say trekking, I think they still have it in their mind. It's more like going out and getting drunk with some. Some uh, people in in the wild somewhere. It's not about really sports and endurance and, and being close to nature. Uh, so, but uh, these are the two main things I think: consistency and organizing events. Because then only you can create that ecosystem where people can get exposure and grow through multiple events. Uh, that also creates so much bonding. Typically, 30 people who you, who you assemble on Saturday morning, four o'clock. In the city to go out, they don't all know each other. By the time you come back two days later, so after spending the entire uh, weekend in the forest, uh, helping each other, cooking each other, setting up camps, uh, overcoming natural uh, challenges together, helping the stronger guys, helping the weaker people. So you get so much bonding. So you get you build such a strongly knitted community with so much of cohesion that you you build a very strong entity that they, uh, gives you those volunteers and that gives us those individuals who grow then over 10 events in two years as an organizer and as somebody with sufficient field experience to then scale up eh? because one guy cannot do it you need to build an organization yeah, you need more people the uh, to eventually organize like seven big sports events uh, and, and, and hundreds of uh, weekend events throughout the year so but unfortunately like one of the counterproductive forces that i've always seen especially in south india is the fact that, that uh, people are very active for two, three years and then after they get married, uh, they disappear, which is very unfortunate. I mean, in Europe, I see young couples with kids going out in the mountains. Uh, here, people throw out everything on uh, out of the window, which is very sad because I see so much potential in people, potential yeah. as organizers, yeah. potentials as triathletes. I, I know guys who are stronger than me, who ran along with me over a thousand kilometers in the Himalayas. Uh, one year later, I see them married with a big punch. Uh, if they come with me for five <laughs> kilometers, they, they simply get into an injury, which is funny, but which is also very sad. There's so much of potential here that simply goes waste because people throw throw out of the window their potential, their uh, skills. Um, after two years between that college, that narrow window between college and marriage. So therefore, I think only due to my presence here for 10 years, it, it, it grew into something. Otherwise, I think there would have never been that con that continuity that one guy who yes. takes it forward from generation to generation to generation, uh, not just the participants but even the organizers, who always <laughs> get, yeah. uh, get stuck into their personal life. And uh, honestly, I haven't met any runner, swimmer, cyclist, triathlete, or trekker from Chennai who doesn't know you, who doesn't know Chennai Trekking Club. So if there is anybody from Chennai who's an outdoor person. He he knows he must be there is uh, seven out of ten times he's gonna be a member of the Chennai Trekking Club Chennai Trekking, okay. and ten on ten times he he knows Chennai Trekking Club so that is yeah. very very astonishing. But yeah, and, so maybe a lot. I should be to maybe finish on this last uh, point also, yes. right? I think definitely over these ten years and then. Since 2012, you can say over the last eight years, we have created a huge impact on the society that fairly, I mean, if I compare Chennai, say, to uh, cities like Pune or Mumbai or even Bangalore, people there were actually ahead of us. Uh, initially in 2012, most of the triathletes that used to come down, or like the full iron in, in Chennai here, uh, used to come from that side because the triathlons were very unknown here. The, the culture in Chennai, as you know, is a little bit more conservative, deep south here compared to north. 
So we made a huge impact on changing the mindset of the local community here in, in terms of getting them into swimming, running, cycling and discovering their amazing potential because they really had the benefit uh, growing up, practicing, living in this tropical heat. They could uh, easily kick somebody from Bangalore. Adapt, or adapt <laughs> yeah, who was like struggling eh, at three o'clock in the afternoon sun to, <laughs> to finish his 10K. And the guys in China used, simply used to run through this weather and, and kick some serious ass, uh, serious North Indian or Western Indian ass uh, while finishing some of these uh, endurance events in this kind of climate. So the practice ground in Chennai, uh, some people say, right, you can practice high altitudes. Uh, both these uh, give you a, a big benefit as an endurance athlete, either low oxygen or extreme weather, basically to uh, push your boundaries mm -hmm. further. Yes. And so this was an amazing, uh, amazing uh, talk with you. It was supposed to be just for 15 minutes, but it just <laughs> now I need to make like three videos. Now I, 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 I was usually going to go for one video, but then thank you for giving me so much content that now I can make maybe three videos. And uh, it's been and th uh, thanks a lot, Peter, for the. Uh, uh, being a part of this, and uh, before yeah, before uh, we uh, we end this, I uh, where where can they find you? Like if I if someone wants to know more about you, how how do they reach you out can, to you? Uh, you can probably share my uh, in the end of the video. You can share my website uh, ultrajourneys.org, which has all my social profiles. So okay. there, uh, from that single URL, they can find everything else. Okay. So but, uh, it was an interesting discussion, yeah, because I mean, all this has happened over the years, but unless you kind of look at it from uh, from 10 years back and then look at how it evolved, uh, your questions made me think a little. I kind of, um, we used to be busy always organizing things that you never have the time to never sit back and to, see yeah, how sit did it and... actually evolve, how <laughs> yeah. did we get into this and all. So I think, I think eventually I have to probably write a book or write some blog on this whole thing. As it's funny sometimes how, how it happened very naturally, very unplanned, but uh, very interestingly over the over the years. So, thanks a lot, Peter. Once again, I cannot sure. th thank you enough. And uh, I'll share this... you a couple of links where you'll find some uh, photos and videos. You then can uh, let me know whether you are able to find sufficient stuff in those links. Otherwise, yes, I'll, I will uh, always give you a call. You're just cool. a call away for uh, me. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks a lot, Peter. And if you sure. really loved uh, uh, this episode, feel free to reach out to Peter and please check out his website because he's he's done amazing stuff. And he's got, if you're a trekker, if you're a mountaineer, if you're a biker, if you are a triathlete, there is something that this man has done which will really... Uh, uh, get you pumped up and do a lot more. Anyone viewing this video, if you like uh, this interview, please uh, share it with your friends and relatives and ask them to subscribe to this channel. Thank you, Peter. This is Abhishek Awad from Triathlon Made Easy signing off.